Hi, I'm Himanshu and I have been working as a software engineer at Meta for past 12 years. Before joining Meta, and this was like early days of iPhone App Store, me and my friend as a part-time hobby, we created an iPhone game. And this game was basically one of the first games to use motion controller to control the games you were playing on a PC. So think of this as like you're playing a tennis game on your laptop and now you use your iPhone as a tennis racket, you do like this and you can hit the ball. This game got really popular and we basically were like, okay, let's start a business, let's start a company around this and that's what we started doing. After working few years on this, we actually really liked building the product from scratch, but not so much the other things which we had to do. You had to do like marketing, you had to like do recruiting, you had to like think of all the operations and like almost 90-95% of my time was going in that. And this is what brought me to Meta where actually I could focus on product development, thing which I love the most. And there's a team of awesome people who are doing everything else. And they actually love that part, doing that part more. At Meta, I have built multiple new products from scratch and helped them scale. Uh, today, I'm hoping that I'll be sharing some of these things which I have learned with you. On a more personal front, I actually live in Sunnyvale in San Francisco Bay Area. And me and my wife have co-founded two startups. I'm of course joking, I'm talking about my kids, a four-year-old and a one-year-old. And unlike real startups, they actually come to your room in the morning, they shake your pillow to wake you up. When I was a kid growing up in India, shaking my parents' pillow to wake them up, the experience of just buying things was so different. The first time I came to US, I went to a big box store like Walmart. You go inside, you pick the product you want to buy and you just go to checkout and buy. There's nobody to talk to, there's nobody to help, and it's more or less you're on your own. And the experience in India was very different. You actually, I used to go to the local small business store. I knew them, they knew me, they used to advise me like, hey, buy this product, it's higher quality, or don't buy this one, because it's probably like a lot more expensive, not worth it. And negotiating on the price was also a very important part of it. Now, as these businesses are now coming online, this back and forth conversation which we are having to buying things, that can't be done on a website or an app. So it's happening over messaging. This is where our team comes in. We will give you all the tools you need to start selling things over messaging across Messenger, WhatsApp, and Instagram Direct. You need an inbox to reply to messages, you need a shopping cart, you need a product catalog, all the things that you'll need, this is what our team works on. Now let's talk about how we actually make money out of this. Let's say you are a small business. You heard about that like you can sell things over messaging. So you set up a shop and you start selling. And you are selling like maybe two or three items every week. And you're like, okay, this is awesome. I can do this thing, but I want to scale and grow my business. So we'll help you create ads, which will help you scale their business to maybe 10x or even 100x the rate which you're currently doing. As a user, think of this as like you're browsing your Facebook feed or you're browsing stories on Instagram and you see an ad for personalized t-shirt. Clicking on that ad will start a conversation with the business. And during that conversation, you can ask them questions about price. You can ask them like, hey, is this product good or does it like properly fit? You can ask all of these questions and finally buy this product all inside of messaging. Over the last seven years, we have grown this product from zero to $10 billion run rate. And during the journey, there were three distinct phases. The first phase was just starting from zero. We were more focused on like building the product from scratch, figuring out like what's the right product market fit. The second phase was working towards the billion dollar revenue. And to do that, we had to scale across the markets. We had to make it work for everybody, like all the different users. The third phase was growing to $10 billion run rate, which is the scale we are at right now. We had to go from thinking about one product, we had to think of it's a portfolio of products. Each of them are in the same domain, still messaging, still business focused, but they are complementing each other and serving the different needs of the business as they're going through that flow. One of the most rewarding aspect of this whole journey has been the all the different businesses seeing them, how they have been successful, how they're building like whole livelihood on the tools which we have built. Let me share a quick story about one of them. So this was very early days of when we were just starting off like 2016. 
we went to like different markets like Thailand, Vietnam, Australia, all the different markets where our customers were, and we used to sit down, sit down with them, and to learn what how they are doing and what the problems they are facing. We met a couple who just had a baby, and since the wife was on the leave, as part time, she just started selling few things on Messenger. They were thinking of more like this is like a supplement income, but not a full time job. Two years later, when we actually talked to them again, now both the husband and the wife were now full time on this. Wife was still focused on answering all the messages, doing the customer support, getting all the orders, while the husband was more focused on the logistics. He was thinking like, where do I source the products? How do I ship the products? All the logistics and then inventory management. That's what he was focused on. And they were now both full time, and this was their only means of like making money. More recently, like almost. One one and a half year ago, when I talked to them again, now they actually had more than fifty employees. This is the most inspiring part. Something like the tools which we have built have allowed these people and lots of other across the world to build companies which are now employing fifty or hundred people or like two hundred people just using our tools. In terms of the first phase, this is actually the hardest phase. The first million is always hardest at meta scale. It's easy to just get like few hundred or thousand people. to use their product but the complications come when you ask them to open their wallet and start paying for the product this is the part of the journey which i actually love the most and i actually also hate the most so you start from nothing and you have a product hopefully in like 6 months 12 months which is being used by thousands or tens of thousands but to do that you will hit just so many roadblocks you'll have like so many different failures and almost every few weeks you'll be like reevaluating the meaning of the life and you are letting that like hey maybe this is what i should be working on or should i not be so this was in late 2015 we were working on facebook ads and we could see the engagement shift into messaging even like my parents who use less technology they were like using whatsapp and messenger to start messaging and calling their friends i could see my dad like he'll periodically call me like hey how do i create a group on whatsapp so we could see like all the engagement this is happening now over messaging but on the business front all the business calling they were still using phone calls they were using emails and that transformation was not there messaging was just such a more convenient and better experience we were like okay this change is going to happen and we want to be part of it and this could be the next wave which we could ride so we started a team of five people five engineers and one product manager and outside of wechat in china basically nobody had monetized messaging so our goal was like okay let's just build different products we built like 10 different products no idea was a bad idea we basically threw everything at the wall we had like multiple prototypes of products going on in parallel almost after like one year i actually like used to read all the reddit communities and facebook groups to see like what people were talking about facebook ads and also our product in general somebody posted that like hey i have tried this new ad format and in last few days i sold 3000 dollars worth of goods just using this product and then over the next few days 10 to 12 more people commented that like hey yes this product works really well for me also we didn't have the scale at this point of time but when you have like users who are evangelizing your product for free you're not paying them anything they are just believe in this that this product is so good that i want to share with other people this was the aha moment for me we like okay like this product is going to work let's just go all in forget about everything else as part of this phase there was actually two reasons for our early success the first one was having an awesome team and the second one was we were building and testing very quickly let me start with building the right team first so you want to focus on people that they have complementary skill as an example for us one of us was really good at like building a scalable infrastructure the second person was really good at all all about the messaging stack i was i had worked on like facebook ads for a long time and on the product side there was one more person who had worked on the ranking side so independently like each of us were did know about the whole stack and we couldn't build up end to end product but together as a team we could basically build whatever we wanted to build to monetize messaging all of us actually had also prior experience which really helped think of this as like we were able to do independently so we divided the work i was like 100% sure that like my part will be good and the other person who is doing their part will be good and we'll actually build an awesome product 
you could just assume high quality of work. And this also allowed us as since we had like experience of building product in the past, when we started like the product started working and we started growing the team, we were able to mentor new engineers and help them on board. The final thing which we did was we were all from the start, we were very committed to this multi-year journey. We knew that this is not a, like a six month or 12 month thing. It's going to take multiple, multiple years to do this. This initial stage is actually very hard. And if you build, don't believe or can't see the long term picture, you'll probably end up quitting like few months or like six months down the line. The second thing which we did was building and testing iteratively. We used to like look at each and every step of the funnel, like, okay, in this step, here's user are dropping off. Let's fix this problem. Our goal was we want to build the best performing product and make it just work for everybody. App switch is an example. So the experience was you are in the Facebook app, you click on an ad and it will switch over to the messaging app to start the conversation over there. This used to take almost 10 seconds to do it, which is a long time. And like a lot of people used to drop off. So what we did was inside the Facebook app, we built a mini messaging app. So when you click on an ad, you will stay in the Facebook app and it could be done in like two seconds instead of like 10 seconds it used to take in the past. This actually was one of the biggest win for the year for us. It just improved the experience so much. The second thing you need to think about is there's like everything is not visible in the data. In most cases, you just have to sit down with your customer and see what they're doing. So when we had like made a trip and we were meeting the customers, like almost most of them, what they used to do was they'll have a spreadsheet of, hey, this is how much I'm spending on ads. This is the products I'm selling and like these ads are working and these are not working. And we realized that like they are spending like 15, 20 minutes of their everyday time just working through this. And this is like, this, they should not be doing this. So we built this inside of our product. We want to make sure that the every minute they're spending on like it's going towards growing the business and not using our tools or working through our tools. The last thing which we did was we knew that like one day we want to have a billion dollar business that we were not focused on like how we'll scale it. The goal was we have hundreds or thousands of customers and we want to build the best product for them. We did things which we knew won't scale at like right away, but over time they might. As an example was like we had focused on small business in Thailand and other developing markets, which we knew were like they were like a comparatively smaller market. But this allowed us to build the right product and we would like over time just scale it everywhere and work, make it work for everybody. The next milestone for us was hitting the billion dollar milestone. This was the goal from the start and it took us almost four years to do this. This was actually the first time where I felt like, okay, we have like created a product. It's a long lasting product and it's being used by a lot of people and we could call it a success. To reach this milestone, instead of like building more products, which probably like most people would think of, we were like, no, we don't want to get distracted. This is our core product. Let's improve this product every day and let's make it the best product. We focus on like scaling the reach of the product also. So instead of like it being available just on Messenger, now it's available on WhatsApp and Instagram and also like across all the markets across the world. On the team front, we went from like having one team of few people to like now we had multiple teams and each of them like were focused on different areas. One was focused on ads interfaces, the other was focused on the consumer experience, one was focused on ranking. The biggest reason for actually our continued success was we were just doing hundreds or thousands of improvements through our product. As humans, we are actually like think more linearly. We don't think in terms of exponential growth because they're just hard for us to visualize. Think of this example. You are like making 2% improvement in your product every week. By end of the year, you'll have actually have a 3x better product. That's like 300% improvement in your product. And 2% improvement every week is not hard. It's like very easy to do, especially in this early stages of the product. Quantitative is just one part of the state story. And on the qualitative side, we used to sit with the customer in the early stages, but now it's not scalable to sit with them. We still do like a little bit of that as we are building new products, but most of our feedback was through. We created like surveys and we created like tools for businesses to give us feedback and report bugs. And I personally used to read through every feedback and the bug report which was coming in. You start to see, start seeing patterns to this, like if us, a simple issue is being reported like five to 10 times. 
by businesses or users that means that like the thousands or tens of thousands of people who are being impacted by the same issue so we definitely need to get on top of this and fix it this like last point around moving big rocks this is actually the complement of the first we were looking for always the next step change on improving our product an example was we made sure our product was translated well we made sure that it was working on every device starting from like high end iPhones to budget android phones we had a facebook has a version called facebook lite which is available for budget android devices and we actually initially didn't support it but then we were like in this phase we actually started supporting it and this expanded our reach by almost hundreds of million dollars immediately it that's just a few months and we were like okay we're like now that this much larger as revenue grew for our team we started getting like lots of leadership attention and the head count to grow the team but in the previous companies me and my coworkers had experience there with like every time the company or the team grew fast the team lost its culture the code base quality went down the product quality went down and it was just not as good of a product so we were like okay let's just enforce a hard constraint that will never let the team grow more than 50% year over year a side effect of this was that the market was asking for let's say 10 things we could only do two or three of these as engineers we actually have a mindset of like not invented here then it's not good quality it's probably like harder to maintain and we just had to give up on that way of thinking and we had to reuse as, as much as we could use we were like using the meta infrastructure of course to scale but also in terms of product features like payments cards appointments all of these things were like okay hey you have built this for some other product we are going to just reuse this instead of building from scratch we now had to set up proper team structure since we had multiple teams with like area leads and team leads one thing which really worked well for us was having for each of these teams we had a clear ownership of what this team owns and we had similarities between these teams the goal was that each of these teams can operate independently and they could figure out their own roadmap and they will basically work bottom up this allowed these teams to feel very empowered and they felt that the ownership of the product or their area so they were able to just execute much faster and they were also able to build much better products growing beyond 1 billion was actually a thing which we i have never actually dreamt of our goal was like okay let's like build to 1 billion and then we'll see but now that we have reached the 10 billion dollar run rate it was a mix of doing the right things and also a lot of it was like being at the right place at the right time there is always like lot of luck factor involved when you try to scale at this rate our mode of operation is had shifted more to an investor where we had like things started thinking of something instead of like just 6 months no that's not the thinking you need to think of a portfolio of products and portfolio of investments over different time frames we also had like different product lines now each of them contributing few billion dollars they were still like very much in the very same domain and monetizing messaging and serving those businesses but we had like specific things for market and verticals so think of this like you are a e-commerce merchant you are selling things you need a shopping cart you need payments but if you are a car dealership you are now thinking like hey i need lead generation and i need appointment booking to actually schedule test drives so these were the kind of things which we were now able to build we also had to start thinking of our bench of course the people will grow and like some of your leads will be like okay now i want to leave and i want to start doing something i'll find found better opportunities so we had to build a bench where we had other people who could step up and take over their roles also this actually really helped us as we had new ideas and we were like thinking of starting new things we had people available who were able to step up and capitalize on these opportunities most of our focus now was having a good investment mix 60 to 70% of our focus was still like next 12 months 20 to 30% was on a 3 year time frame and the last 10 to 15% was on a 7 year or a 10 year time frame this last bucket the chances of the success are low for this bucket but it the hope is that even if one of them work we'll have few billion dollars of extra revenue so we had to like seeds like a lot of these bets and to validate them we had to actually make a conscious effort that we are not using revenue to track the success of this team 
in the early stages the roi per engineer will be just so low for these teams that you should not be using this metric but you definitely need to focus on it because you need to find those next s curves otherwise your growth will start plateauing and you will not be able to grow the product it's very actually very hard to restart the growth think of this as like you are planting watering a plant every week that's just easy but trying to revive a dead plant it's like impossible or like very very hard the last point 1% is 100 million actually this was the hardest for me to even it analyze i always believe that like you just build one product it works for every market it just works for every vertical but that's not true we had to start doing like market and vertical specific things think of this as like you improve for 1% of a business if you find a step change and you double they like make their experience just so much better that it like you are making double the money that's 100 million dollars and it's definitely worth it so we created like different teams which were focused more on the growth side of things and their focus was they will focus on one particular market and go sit with down with the business in that market they will travel they learn everything which is to learn about these markets and spend time with the customers and then they will find few things which will allow us to unlock a next stage of growth in these markets and once they have fixed this market they will move on to the next one when i joined this team the goal was a billion dollars but now that we have 10 billion dollars i'm really thankful for it i don't think personally i'll ever get, get a chance to work on something which will have this level of impact but what keeps me going is we are just still so early in this in developing markets we have made some progress like people are using messaging to reach out to the business but in developing and mar- developed markets it's still mainly about calling and email our hope is in the next 5 to 10 years i personally won't have to call any business and it will always be like every business just supports messaging thank you so much for the opportunity and i'm hoping that some of the learnings i shared will be useful for you as you build your own products